Hey guys, how's it going? So in this tutorial, I'll be showing you guys how to calculate the adsorption energy of a molecule on top of a surface using the Ripper module of TurboMole. Now, as an example for this tutorial, we'll be calculating the adsorption energy of the H2O molecule that you can see right over here on top of the LiH001 surface that you can see right over here. Now, the adsorption energy is given by this formula. So, the, uh, so you basically calculate the energy of the total system, that is the H2O on top of the LiH surface using periodic boundary conditions and then you subtract the energy of the isolated water molecule, that is H2O, as well as the isolated LiH001 slab, um, again with periodic boundary conditions, and then you get the adsorption energy. Now keep in mind that when using this particular convention or this particular formula, a negative value of the adsorption energy indicates that the adsorption is favorable However, another formula or another convention is quite common in literature. For example, if you head over to this paper over here and scroll down just a little bit, you will see that they used um, the reverse formula. That is, they subtract the energy of the total system from the sum of the isolated components. And in this convention, a positive value of the adsorption energy will indicate that adsorption is favorable. Now, uh, in order to get the geometry, again, um, I will follow this particular paper in order to get the geometry of the H2Li001 surface. And if you head over to the supplementary material, then you can get this kind of PDF file that I've already downloaded. And here they have provided the H2Li-H um, um, coordinates for different sizes of supercells. Now, for this tutorial, we'll use the largest supercell that consists of 64 Li and 64 H atoms so that you have a total of 128 atoms in the surface and three atoms of the H2O molecule. Um, yeah, so here um, you may notice that the coordinates that they have provided are in the postcard format, that is the WASP format. However, for our TurboMole Ripper calculation, we require them to be in the TurboMole's quad format. Now, don't worry, you can easily convert them to the TurboMole Quad format by checking out this web app that I've created. So this web app is accessible with URL. And once you open this web app, you should head over to convert other formats to Ripper and then select the source file format to be postcard. Now, once you do that, you can come back to the PDF and try to copy all of it. Now, as you can see that this is a really large structure, so the um, coordinates actually extend to like three pages, and we cannot really copy all of these um, at once in a PDF. That is why I hate providing coordinates in a PDF, but uh, yeah, so anyway, so we'll copy them in three steps from the three pages. So first I'll copy these, control C, and paste them over here. So we have the first portion of the postcard here. And if we click outside the box, then you will notice that you get an error, but it is normal because this is just an incomplete structure. Now head over to the second page of the uh, structure, copy that again with Control C, head over to the end and paste it using Control V, then copy and paste the last portion of the structure as well. And let me just go ahead and do that and click anywhere outside the text box. And here it is. So now you can see that the structure is passed um, correctly and now what you can do is you can go ahead and see that you have the coordinates in the TurboMole's quad format as well as the cell parameters for your control file. Now let me just make a teeny tiny change. Uh, so in this coordinates, the coordinates of the H2O molecule are actually at these three are the coordinates of the H2O molecule. Now what I would like to do is to have them at the beginning. So I'll just cut them using Control plus X and go to the beginning and paste them there. Now for this tutorial, um, we will try to you know, calculate the adsorption energy as I already mentioned using TurboMole's Ripper module. And we will try to reproduce or try to get a result that is close to 
and the result and that was also again obtained in this paper this paper is from like 2017 so here they used this largest supercell with 128 surface atoms and got um, an adsorption energy of 215 milli electron volts so somewhere here they mentioned that these are in milli electron volts i would assume yeah here so it is mentioned that these are in milli electron volts and um, they used actually VASP for their calculations. So the DFT, PBE, and HF calculations have been performed using VASP. So our goal will be to try to reproduce this value using the PBE functional. However, I give you a spoiler right now that we won't actually be able to reproduce this value in this tutorial. But in order to reproduce this value, we'll need to take into account uh, something called the basis set superposition error and once we take that into account then only can we reproduce this value obtained using VASP so that would be uh, you know the topic of discussion of my next tutorial so in this tutorial we will get a value which will be close to this but not exactly this but in the next tutorial um, I will discuss about the basis set superposition error how to get rid of it and then we will be able to reproduce this value and this is a problem of, you know, utilizing localized Gaussian basis functions for periodic calculations. It is quite common in literature, so don't worry about it. It's a very easy and very simple technique um, to, uh, I mean, uh, you can get rid of the basis at superposition error with a very easy and simple technique. So enough of chit chat. Now let's start some calculations. So head over to your terminal and create a directory called, let's say, adsorption. Sorry, it's option and move into this directory. And now, as I mentioned, we need to calculate these three energies for our adsorption energy. So we will have to run three calculations. So we will create three um, subdirectories. So the first one would be the total system H2 LiH. Then we will create another directory for just the H2 molecular calculation, and then another directory for the LiH 001 periodic surface. Now move into the total system directory that is H2LIH and create a file called coord. I'm sorry, um, that's not what I had in mind. So coord. So create this file, come back to your web app, copy the contents of this box, paste them here using control plus V, and then save the file using control plus O, hit enter and control plus X to exit. Now we have this file over here. Now we will run the define as usual and I have created multiple tutorials before explaining all this how define works so I will really cruise through um, my uh, input creation using define so if you don't really understand any step please refer to my uh, you know initial tutorials on turbomol so anyway so hit enter enter a space code now we can see that the uh, coordinates of the 131 atoms have been added successfully asterisk to next menu no then i'll use a large basis set such as def 2 tzvp and um, hit asterisk to go to the next menu assign an initial guess y zero y then i'll move into the dft sub menu turn it on set the functional to be pbe okay go back move into the ri menu turn it on set the um, auxiliary base is said to be universal. Okay, works fine. Exit and exit define. Now I'll open. Now, if you see, you'll have the control file as well as some other files. So now we will go ahead and open the control file and we'll come down here and we will paste the cell parameters from the web app. Now in order, since we are trying to reproduce this result, and this was obtained with a gamma point calculation, so we will also use just a gamma point. So here I paste the cell parameters and other periodic related stuff from the web app into my control file. However, um, I'll make a few changes. So the K points, um, okay, so let me start with the periodicity. Now, since um, 
for any adsorption energy calculation you don't really care about the third dimension which is why you have this much vacuum here but with a code like turbomole you don't really need to have so much vacuum you can just set the periodicity so uh, since this is a 2d system we can simply set the periodicity to be two this is different to a code like wasp or quantum espresso where you would really need this um, vacuum in the third direction okay so you set the periodicity to two then for the cell parameters again you don't need to specify so many parameters if your system is 2d periodic then you only need to specify three parameters that is the cell parameter a b and the gamma angle then the number of k points again we will keep it to be one but now we will remove the number of k points in the third direction so that would just be one by one k points now we will save this control file and we can now i guess run the calculation before that i will set the number of cores uh, to be used to be let's say 64 or even 32 would do the trick actually so it is not that big of a system so let me use 32 cores and run the calculation by typing in ripper smp directing the output to the output file and um, the background so this will run my ripper calculation you can check the output file to see if the calculation is running and indeed it is although i think i will go ahead and stop the calculation now and the reason is I made a slight mistake, so that will make the calculation a bit slower. So let me go ahead and stop this. So let me explain what I uh, did wrong. So let me get rid of these ripper files temporarily. Okay, now coming back to the control file. So what I did wrong was that this is a fairly large system, so I would like to use a large value of RI core over here. So let me use 50,000 megabytes that is 50 gigabytes that will really help in speeding up the calculation and now run the calculation again so now we can check out the output file okay so now um, it will be using 50,000 gigabytes now, while this calculation is running let us go ahead and prepare the input for the, or run other calculations we also need to run the calculation for the isolated water molecule as, as well as the lih one surface so what I'm going to do is to save time, I'm going to copy the contents of my total system directory into the directory LIH. So I will do that by doing this asterisk over here and then move into the LIH directory. Get rid of these, you know, temporary ripper files again. And um, okay, now I will head into the quad file and get rid of the first three atoms that correspond to the H2 molecule. And, okay. and that will make the number of atoms in my system to be 128 now. Save this file. And now I'll need to run define again to generate a new guess. So I'll run it again and generate a new guess. Okay. Okay, seems to be working fine. Exit. Now, once again, I can go ahead and simply run this calculation with the same control file. So now let me go ahead and run this. So now I have, uh, you know, uh, ran a calculation for the total system as well as for the LIH01 surface. Now the only thing that remains is to run an SCF calculation for the isolated H2 molecule because these two are already running. So in the meanwhile, we will head into the uh, H. So yeah, so now um, what we can do is, again, we can try to copy our, actually, yeah, so now this time we won't really copy everything, but what we can do is we can open the total code file from here and just copy the contents of the, you know, first three atoms so this much so we'll copy that and move into the h2o directory create a code file paste the contents here type in dollar and so this will be my new code file for the h2o molecule i will run define again and um, add in these coordinates and yeah so three atoms have been successfully added go to the next menu 
assign the base is set as before and um, set the initial gas turn on DFT set the functional to be PBE turn on um, RI set the functional oh sorry um, the base is set to be universal okay seems to be working fine and now actually in our control file um, we won't be adding the cell parameters or any periodicity related stuff because this calculation is to be done for a molecular case while the, the surface has to be done periodic so we'll exit out of this control file and run this ripper calculation again I mean uh, for the H2 molecule okay so now let's see which calculations are completed by now so let's see the calculation for the total system so okay so this is almost complete so now it is calculating gradients but anyway the what we need is just the energy so essentially this calculation is already complete similarly for the LIH uh, surface so this calculation is still running and the um, isolated water molecules calculation is complete now so it actually just took like 0.55 seconds okay so now let's head over to Wolfram Alpha and paste in these quantities that we have calculated so okay so let's look at the energy of the total system um, sorry okay so this calculation took like 4 minutes and 16 seconds which is uh, actually really quick so let me go ahead and copy this total energy of the total system and paste it here and then we will subtract the energy of the isolated water molecule so let me get that as well so here is that so let me go ahead and paste it here and then we will also put in the energy of the LIH surface let's see if the calculation is complete okay so the convergence is complete so the calculation is converged so let me go ahead and pick this energy and paste it over here and this will now give me the adsorption energy so I get a value of this so this is sorry so this is in heart tree or atomic unit so now we want to convert it into electron volts so again you can head over to my web app and go to the unit conversion utility and uh, set the input value to be atomic units and paste in this value and here it is so we get a value of 321 milli electron volts which is actually different than 215 milli electron volts and this is exactly why, um, why I mentioned about this basis at superposition error so that is the reason why you have this discrepancy and we will learn about how to take this basis at superposition error into account and get the correct value in my next tutorial so please stay tuned and this is it for today's tutorial so today you have learned how to you know calculate the adsorption energy of a molecule on top of a surface using the ripper module of turbomol however you, you have also seen that this and uh, the way i have calculated this energy right now it consists or contains the basis at superposition error and in my next tutorial we'll see how to address that so i hope you guys really found this uh, tutorial useful and if you did, then don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to my channel for more videos like this. Thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Have a great day.